right, I got the rose. I get this full of water and I'm going to go ahead and insert. This is a bare root rose. So I'm gonna insert it in water for 24 hours before I plant it outside. It's only one tree. Wow, it's pretty large. <gasps> it's really, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. That looks really good. Oh, I'm so happy. So they even give you a stick and to help you support it. That's ready. They give you a, a little guidebook. Oh, this is so nice. And they give you the straps so that you can tie it to this and that way it will be do really good. But look how big it is. It's really large. I am so happy. This is Emily Bronte. So and it's the tree. So I'm gonna get some water and fill up the bucket. This is the Emily Bronte. I got the two tree roses. It's a bare root. Looks, it is like budding already. So I'm going to be planting this today when the rain stops. It's stunning. Look how tall it is. I'm super, super happy. I'm going to go ahead and plant the bare root rose. I keep it in water. I've had it in water two days. You can leave it out to 48 hours because it was storming and I wasn't able to do it. But I tried to just do it only 48 hours. Look at those roots. They are fantastic. Okay, I'm going to be planting my rose. And all I'm going to do is dig a hole, dip it off where I keep the crown right here out of the soil. I don't want it to be super deep up here because it's essential that that crown is out of the soil so it won't cause any rotting especially here this where it's where so I wet my other rows that we dug out and the soil is pretty good but I'm going to be putting some good soil in the ground and even though you don't need a lot of a lot of depth when you see the rows I still think you should do a pretty deep hole to put some good soil under it. I have only uh, the granulated fertilizer. I usually use a liquid rose fertilizer when I'm going to start a new rose. But I've used the granulated and it's been fine. You just have to be really cautious that it doesn't burn the root. So I end up putting the granulated fertilizer first and then I put the really good soil and compost and mix it and you just have to make sure you water it really well. I planted the other one and did not water it because it was going to rain for days. It's been storming here. But if it's not and the soil is really dry, you can't burn your rose. It's not good for it. So make sure if you don't feel very secure in putting just like a half a cup of, of granulated uh, fertilizer, rose fertilizer, that you get a liquid one instead and, and that'll be a lot safer to do but I'm gonna use the granulator because that's all I have right now I've given you a few options of putting it in the bottom with the layering so it doesn't burn the root or you can leave it out if it makes you too nervous or use the liquid and on this example of another bare root that I planted is you can go ahead and place it on top whichever makes you feel more comfortable there's no perfect way okay there's the hole probably a foot deep um, it's pretty hard. I may try to make it a little deeper. It is way more important to make the hole much wider than even deeper to me because you want plenty of space for that root that's wide to rest there and not bend too much. So I'm trying to go as wide as I can on the hole more than deep. I'm going to make it as deep as I can to add the soil. You can see the width of the root and it fits very nicely there 
So that's what I want. I want to get it inside that hole very nicely, but I'm going to bring it up and put some good soil underneath. But I'm going to put the fertilizer first. Okay, so I'm going to put just like half a cup or so, not a lot. And then get my gloves on. You want something in between the fertilizer and your rose. You, if you're using the slow release uh, granular granular um, you really don't want that touching your root and I'm going to add some of this fish compost I have a bunny and I have bunny poop you can use alfalfa meal or anything like that for the nitrogen but this has plenty because this is fish compost so between this and the granular, granular um, feed slow release it should do just fine look at that that's perfect right there so I'm gonna get the soil again I'm sorry there's a shadow but I don't fit anywhere else so I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and straight Make sure you cover all of the roots really well. You don't want any exposed at all. I'm gonna put some more compost. And what I love about this compost, not only is it high nitrogen, but it's not gonna burn the roots in any way. It's really safe. This is just full of nitrogen, so I was going to use some bunny poop, <laughs> bunny fertilizer, but I'm going to leave it for my garden beds. Now, one, one other thing I like is making it that's a little lower than the ground around it so that the water comes in and it stays there, doesn't just wash away, especially when it's starting. Um, it's really critical that it gets enough water to do really well for the spring so let me go get I'm gonna put a stick that it brings so that it supports it because it's super windy here So here's the rose, it's really nice and level. When you placed the strap, it brings two. You could put one on the top, one on the bottom, which is better. Um, but don't put it on the top alone. Uh, you can't really damage the rose if there's a big windstorm. I may go ahead and put the second one later, but for now, that's it. The Emily Bronte is planted and it's gonna do fantastic. I cannot wait. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Melva and I try to grow as much as I can in food and flowers. And if you have been here for growing this channel, I want to thank you so much. We have reached almost 1,000 subscribers. I am beyond appreciative for all the support that I've found in the past few months since I started again posting. I am grateful and I will continue to post every single week. So here's the rose a few weeks later. It, you can see it's doing incredible. Here's the few things that you have to remember. One is if you use the compost, make sure it's not hot. Make sure that the roots, you dig out two, three inches if you're not gonna add extra soil and spread your roots flat. You don't want anything curling. You can trim it and it won't do anything to the rose. It'll just grow again. They like to spread far away. So you don't want them curling around and wrapping around like they do in a pot. And the other one is, if you use the fertilizer, either use the liquid, so you're not gonna be afraid that it's gonna do anything bad to the rose, or go ahead and use the granulated like I did, but make sure that you layer it with the soil or put soil on top. Make sure you water your rose really well if it's not going to rain. Roses are not complicated, they're so easy to grow. And the David Austin roses, 
by far they have been my favorite these are my first tree roses that i get from them and they're completely worth it this is not sponsored i am just blown away how large how tall they are and how beautiful the condition is so i cannot wait i don't know if this is going to bloom this year it is known to bloom in the following year but we'll see because it looks pretty happy so i am crossing my fingers that i see amazing blooms on both of these trees if you're too nervous to start having big roses in your garden and you want to start small go ahead and do little miniature roses there are some beautiful ones and it's a good way to kind of learn how to prune them and maintain them and they will keep on growing and get bigger and bigger i found a gem so let me show you one that i found i found this beautiful rose at the supermarket it has the most beautiful colors it's a miniature rose and what i love is it's already dying here i gotta cut it off but look at the colors how beautiful they are but it has no thorns and I never have seen a miniature rose. I buy them all the time because I love them. And they have the worst thorns. This one doesn't have any. But I need to pot it up because it's getting yellow leaves and needs some food. I found this beautiful pot, terracotta. And uh, I'm gonna plant it right here. This is big enough. Plenty deep for it to get plenty of space. I'm put some I have leftover potting soil, some organic potting soil. I am going to heat it, some roast because it's in a pot and it's gone through some trauma. I'm going to mix that really well so it doesn't burn the root. More. <laughs> there are my gloves and I'm doing it without gloves. My bad habit. I just never wear gloves. I don't know why, but I just don't. I should. Because my nails were really nice until the season started because I rarely wear gloves. So I try to put soil on top of the fertilizer. I want the roots to start pulling down and I don't want to burn the plants. So I put soil and then the fertilizer sorry there's a plane going by then the fertilizer and then more soil and just a potting mix is good because it'll keep moisture in it so let's see and again I want to do it to the exact level that's there I'm gonna test it it's a little low. I want it to be lower than the rim so when I water it doesn't spill out. So now, yeah, that's perfect. So it's a tiny bit, like maybe half an inch or so from the rim of the container. That's perfect. I'm not going to break the roots because it's not root bound. It's actually really nice. The root is beautiful. So pretty. It is gorgeous i just love the color of it it's very unusual it was the only one they had so i went to my husband we we're gonna have lunch together there and i go oh i think i want a rose that i saw there it has no thorns on the color so unusual and it's a little larger the rose on the typical miniature rose if there's only one left so i'll get it after we eat he's like go get it every time you say that they take <laughs> what you want to buy because you always wait <laughs> So I went and got it and as soon as I grabbed it somebody next to me was like oh my gosh that's so pretty but there was not another one so good thing I grabbed it because it would have been gone probably there we go I'm gonna get rid of any that leaves the same as any other rose like these that are yellow I'm gonna take them off so I just want the strength to go to setting the root so I'm gonna get rid of anything that's weak anything that's kind of yellow in color and I'm gonna cut this one. I need to go get the pruner and cut it. Yeah, that's gonna be a very happy rose. I am so happy to have found you. It has a gorgeous purple color on the leaf there. That's what I fell in love with also. 
I'm going to go ahead and follow the same thing. I'm gonna go to this here. So remember the five leaves, these are three leaves. I'm gonna go to the next one. And that's the five leaf, one, two, three, four, five. So there, that's ready. I'm gonna water it once I put it in place. My new baby, she beautiful. So stunning. I just love roses. What is your favorite rose? Tell me below, I wanna know. I love roses and dahlia. They're my absolute favorite.